Genesis 32, the passage in the Bible where Jacob wrestles with God. I'm going to explain to you in today's video how we know Jacob wrestled with God and not necessarily like a mere angel as some refers today based on other passages in the Old Testament like Hosea. I'm going to show you why Jacob wrestled with God and I'm also going to explain to you why this should not be a shock to you. So let's get into it in today's video. Hi and welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Israel. What we do here is we help you avoid deception while mastering the Bible. Press the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing and follow us along the journey. Now, number one, this was a supernatural experience that Jacob experienced, no doubt. But the reason I say that you shouldn't be shocked or shouldn't be surprised in the narrative when you get to Genesis 32 and you see that Jacob is ultimately wrestling with God, because if you're reading through Genesis, by the time you get to Genesis 32, You've already seen Genesis 18 and make sure after this video, you check out that video we've done on Genesis 18. I'll leave it linked in the description box below. Secondly, after we see God appear to Jacob's grandfather, Abraham in Genesis 18, further along in the narrative, when we start to pick up with Jacob, we see two previous encounters with God ultimately and Jacob already. Earlier on in Genesis, we see Jacob have a dream where he sees this huge ladder going up to heaven and he sees angels coming and going between the earth. And the Bible says that Jacob saw the Lord standing above the ladder. And then we see not long after this, Jacob talk about another dream he had where the angel of God ultimately met him in a dream and was ultimately telling him things which later on in Genesis indicates to us which was God as well. Now the reason I spent time quickly explaining these things to you because I want you to understand the theme and the context up until this point in the book of Genesis. Even if you read this short passage which we're going to discuss right now in regards to Genesis 32, it's quite clear in and of itself. But when you start thinking about the things I've given you to add additional context, it makes even more sense when we actually get to this particular passage. Now, how did Jacob get into this scenario where he was ultimately resting with God? Well, Jacob was afraid of his older brother, his older twin brother, who the last time he basically saw him was talking about killing him. You can see here on screen, the scripture says, this is Jacob's psyche here. He says, and he said, if Esau, that's his brother, comes to one company, and smites it and kills them, then the other company which is left shall escape. So that's the context. He's basically dividing his family up so he can basically potentially get an escape route for some of his family if perhaps his brother is ultimately coming with vengeance in his mind. Now this sets the scene. When we get to verse 24 of Genesis 32, the Bible tells us that and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. So he just basically sent his family over like a river brook and he begins fighting with a man all night now this starts to paint the picture of ultimately jacob wrestling with god but it also starts to give us some powerful narrative so he's wrestling all night with this particular individual man and then the bible says something really powerful and really interesting the bible goes on to say in the very next line the two men were basically wrestling with each other and when the other man saw that he didn't defeat Jacob up until this point it says he touched the hollow of his thigh bone and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him now this is the first clue in this particular narrative right think about this this man is wrestling with Jacob all night and as it begins to dawn towards the morning the man literally just touches his thigh bone ultimately and his Five socket is out of joint. Clearly, this indicates quite a few things to us. Firstly, the man did not need to be wrestling with Jacob all night if he really wanted to defeat him. Secondly, what the Bible is actually indicating to us, I believe, is actually really powerful. Think about the overall context, like I kind of explained to you earlier briefly. Jacob is afraid of his brother who's basically oncoming. And what does this particular man do with Jacob? He keeps him in the same vicinity all night. And then when it's time to go ultimately, or when he really wants to go, then he basically just touches the guy's thigh bone and Jacob's hip bone or thigh bone is ultimately dislocated. You see, God was keeping Jacob there all night. So he didn't have an opportunity to seriously run away and escape. God was causing Jacob to trust in him for his deliverance and not his own plans. Another thing, secondly, we'll talk about him dislocating his thigh bone is clearly 
ordinary men do not just touch someone's hip or thigh and just dislocate their bodies. So like I said, this is the first clue. Then as you can see here, the man now says, let me go, the day's breaking. It's becoming morning time again. And as you can see, Jacob says, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now again, this is a second indicator which is adding on from the first indicator of the guy just being able to dislocate his hip bone. Why? Because Jacob wants a blessing from this particular individual. Now obviously blessings are not just exclusive to God but it still adds to the overarching narrative that we're seeing which is actually building up. And the third reason which indicates to us that this was God is in the very next couple of lines is where an interesting exchange of words comes to the forefront. The man asks Jacob, what is your name? Jacob says rightly, his name is Jacob. And as you can see, the man then said to him, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. So it's not every day in the Bible men's names are changed. But there's two things I want to highlight which are very vital and give us paramount insight that this is God appearing to Jacob as a man, ultimately taking on physical form and wrestling with him up until the morning. Firstly, as you read on in Genesis, Jacob's name is ultimately changed to Israel again. Surprise, surprise, who is the one changing Jacob's name in that particular scenario? God himself. Secondly, what's also powerful about this is, remember earlier on in the video when I talked about God had already appeared in physical form as a man to Jacob's grandfather, Abraham? Well, one of the things which stands out clearly in Abraham's narrative with Abraham and his wife, Sarah, is before we know him as Abraham and we know his wife as Sarah, their names were ultimately changed from Abraham and Sarai. Who changed their name from Abraham to Abraham and Sarai to Sarah? You guessed it. God himself changed their names from Abraham and Sarai to Abraham and Sarah. Are you seeing a consistent theme here? Let's continue. Then Jacob asked the man for his name and the man does not tell him his name, but basically proceeds to bless Jacob. Now, up until this point, we've had multiple examples of clear evidence from the scripture itself, which indicates to us this was clearly God appearing as a man, but it gets better because as you can see here, Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Why? What does Peniel mean? He says, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So Jacob himself has been wrestling with this man all night into the morning and the guy dislocates his fire bone and Jacob's name is now changed to Israel. He now has a limp, as we'll read about in a moment. And he says himself, I'm going to name this place Peniel because I've seen God face to face and I did not die. So Jacob is testifying here. So it's very clear for the reader. He believes the person he was ultimately fighting with was ultimately God appearing in the flesh. Now, I don't believe anybody who believes this is God appearing in the flesh believes that God ultimately showcased to Jacob all of his divine glory, but was just merely appearing in a physical form to keep Jacob in this particular region for a specific amount of time. I kind of alluded to this earlier on, but as you can see here the scripture says that as jacob ultimately crossed the brook he now was walking with a limp if you remember what i said to you earlier on god kept him in this particular situation all night so he wasn't running away all evening and he had to now completely trust in god as his deliverer you see he literally now could not physically run away anymore because god had just dis literally dislocated his thigh bone so he literally could not run away anymore he had to stay there and deal with the situation in the way god ultimately wanted him to so it's actually very powerful when you just think about what's actually happening in the flow of the narrative let alone that god ultimately appeared to Abraham, Jacob's grandfather previously, and is now appearing in physical form again to Jacob himself. Now, you may hear some people say, look, no, this was not God wrestling with Jacob. God did not appear as a man. But this was ultimately a scenario where an heavenly angel ultimately came to wrestle with Jacob. And some people will ultimately take you to a book towards the end of the Old Testament, a book by one of the Israelite prophets called 
a man named Hosea because it brings up this whole account again. And because in Hosea, which we'll look at in a moment, the Bible talks about how Jacob had power over an angel. People try to make the case that, see, the Bible says later on, it wasn't God, it was an angel. Now, firstly, I'm always going to say to you on my channel, right, because I'm always interested in making you a Bible master, always go and read the context and make the decision for yourself. But when you read the context, what you're going to find is the context agrees with our view that this was ultimately God appearing as a man, because the context in Hosea clearly indicates that this was God Jacob wrestled with. But before we get to this, I want to preface this so you can understand clearly that the word angel clearly just naturally means a messenger. It does not determine who is ultimately delivering the message. It's just a word that ultimately means in Hebrew, a messenger. Because if God appeared in physical form, he could technically be called an angel. So we see someone in the New Testament, for example, John the Baptist, referenced as an angelos in Greek, which is ultimately the same word as angel. Hopefully you get the point. Now we only need to deal with four lines in this particular text in Hosea. But as you can see here, it starts off by saying, the Lord has a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob. So this is clearly talking about Jacob, even though at this particular point it's talking about the nation, it goes specifically into the specific individual Jacob we've just read about. We know this because what does it say? It says here clearly he took his brother by the heel in the womb. This is a reference to earlier in the Bible in Genesis when Jacob, the man Jacob who was wrestling before, literally had his brother's heel when he was ultimately coming out behind his twin brother Esau. Then what does it say? And it says, and by his strength, he had power with God. So ultimately he fought with God. That should highlight this to you very clearly. But what does it say? Hosea continues and says, yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. So the way I read this and the way many people read this is he had power with God and it says, yea, he had power with the angel and prevailed, right? It's saying the same thing in two ways. Even if you don't want to take this view, the rest of the scripture gives you even more context. He wept and made supplication unto him. So Jacob is weeping and making supplication unto who? Who was it just referring to? An angel, right? This particular angel. Now, if you want to say, that Jacob was weeping and making supplication, ultimately petitioning and praying to an angel, then that's up to you. But clearly the flow of the narrative is showing us that this particular angel, this particular messenger was God. How do we know this? Because it continues. He found him Bethel and there he spake with us. So again, in Bethel, the encounter Jacob ultimately had was with who? Surprise, surprise. The Bible says it was with God. If you still haven't got this at this point, what does it say next? Even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord his memorial. Some translations will say the Lord his name. Now this is very clear. Jacob ultimately had power with God, yea with the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication. He met him in Bethel and it says even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord his memorial. If some people want to read Hosea and try and say to you that, no, this was just a mere angel, then why was Jacob praying and seeking supplication from him? Why was he meeting him where he met God? And why does Hosea say this was even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord his memorial? It's so clear for anybody who has no problem with God being able to appear in physical form as a man. Now, some will say, but the Bible, though, says God is not a man. And this is what you need to say if you ever hear them say this.